Welcome back to Monitors Unbox. Today I'm rounding out our big update fest of recommendation videos with a revisit of the best monitors you can get at each price point. It turns out the previous version of this video is a year old now, more than overdue for an update, and there's no better time than during the holiday shopping season. The idea with this video, in contrast to the overall best monitors video, is that I go through price points ranging from $150 through to over $1,000 in $50 or $100 increments, recommending the monitor I choose at that price. Normally in my best monitor videos, I tend to provide multiple options for people in whatever category, but that isn't going to be the case today. So if you want all the decision making taken out of your hands, you just want to know what monitor to get with the amount of cash you have to spend, then this is the video for you. Like always, the recommendations in this video are based on my testing of a large variety of gaming monitors. I usually prefer to recommend products I've tested and know to be good, although there are some exceptions. Also, monitor pricing does change regularly, so if you're watching this video weeks or months after it went live, I'd recommend checking out the latest pricing via our links in the description. This year I'm starting out my recommendations at the $150 price point because I had a quick look and I just can't recommend anything at around $100 right now. If you want a gaming monitor with a decent refresh rate, the typical minimum you're looking at is $110, with the options around that price offering up pretty mediocre VA panels. Below $110 you won't even be getting 144Hz support, which won't satisfy the requirements for most people after a decent gaming monitor. I certainly couldn't recommend someone buy a sub 144Hz 1080p gaming monitor in 2023. At $150 I would recommend the AOC 24 g 2 sp which has been priced as low as $140 US, but more typically around $160. It's a 24 inch 1080p 165Hz IPS gaming monitor that provides excellent bang for buck, and while it doesn't have the largest display size or highest resolution, it works nicely as an entry point to high refresh rate gaming. In particular, I like the balance the 24G2SP brings to a range of categories. It has good response times for both 165Hz and variable refresh rate gaming. It has solid color quality, including a decent IPS contrast ratio and a bit of wide gamut support. And it has useful quality of life things such as a height adjustable stand. It's not a class leader in any one area, but it does perform well across most areas with no standout weaknesses. At around $200 US, you have a few choices to make. Get a more premium 1080p display, perhaps something larger, or roll the dice with an entry-level 1440p 144Hz monitor. Generally, I think the resolution benefit of 1440p is more important than improving other aspects to a 1080p display, so the value for me lies more with the entry-level 1440p choices. Right now, the two leading candidates are the LG 27GN800 and the Gigabyte G27Q, neither of which I've tested in depth. Based on the reviews of others that I trust, like ratings, the LG option is a little faster but has a worse contrast ratio, while the Gigabyte option a little slower but has a better contrast ratio. Either seems to be a suitable choice around this particular price point, just don't go expecting anything amazing at just $200 US. In the $250 US range, I would recommend the MSI G274 QPF-QD, currently priced at $260. A 27-inch 1440p 170Hz IPS LCD, this MSI model offers a few upgrades over what you get in the $200 class. You're getting a slightly higher refresh rate, wider color gamut, and better response time tuning. There is always going to be question marks over how much better of an experience you will get at this price versus about $200, but there's enough incremental improvements here that I think a 25% price premium is worth it. On the other hand, there is so much competition in the 1440p 144Hz-ish space right now that it ultimately comes down to individual needs and specific features. I personally would choose the G274 QPF-QD because it suits my needs really nicely, but if I wanted a KVM switch, then the slightly more expensive Gigabyte M27 QP might be a better choice. If I had more like $300 US to spend, I don't see a ton of value at this specific price point. In my opinion, you'd be better off spending a little less on 1440p 170Hz in the MSI G274 QPF-QD that we just discussed, or spending a little more to get a 1440p 240Hz display. 240Hz hasn't quite made its way down to $300 flat just yet, but it presents a significant upgrade over 170Hz monitors. Meanwhile, at a near 50% price increase over entry-level 1440p high refresh, it's hard to justify a premium 1440p 165Hz-ish display here. 
I said I would pick a monitor at every price point though. So if I was forced, I would get the LG 27 GP850 or the 27 GP83B. Both are very similar monitors that often hover around $300 US. The reason you'd get them over the G274 QPF-QD is that they are faster, not so much at the highest refresh rate, but across the refresh range, the LG options are better tuned to deliver a somewhat better experience. If you're after the best speed and motion clarity, they make a lot of sense. If you just want a great looking, well-balanced 1440p gaming monitor, it's not a revolutionary upgrade over cheaper products. At around $350 US, I'd be looking at 1440p 240Hz gaming monitors. The MSI G274 QPX is usually in this range, offering a 27-inch 1440p 240Hz IPS panel, and again, a great balance of high performance across many categories. High brightness, very good contrast ratio, flat panel with great viewing angles, decent sRGB mode, they're only typical to average response times. There's no major deal breaker flaws, and I think it's hard to go past at such a low price. I also think this sort of pricing structure makes a lot of sense. At $260, MSI have their great 1440p 170Hz option, then for 30 to 40% more, you can bump that up to 240Hz. Now, it's not a straight refresh rate upgrade. The panels in each monitor have different characteristics, but 240Hz is faster, smoother, and delivers lower input latency, which are all nice advantages to have, especially for competitive multiplayer gaming. It also provides additional headroom for future proofing as you upgrade your PC. So there's a lot to like at 2023's historically low prices. At around $400 US, I would purchase the Gigabyte M27U, which in recent weeks I've seen drop as low as $430 US. The M28U is also an option around $450, but for most people, the $430 M27U is a great choice, offering a 27-inch 4K 144Hz IPS LCD panel with all the usual gaming features like adaptive sync support. And yes, that's right. In the latter parts of 2023, you can indeed purchase a high refresh rate 4K gaming monitor for under $450 US, unthinkable just a few years ago. The M27U stands out from the crowd due to its affordability and good balance of performance. Motion performance is similar to that of other modern IPS LCDs, and the panel is decently well optimized for variable refresh rate gaming. No glaring flaws here. We're looking at a wide gamut experience, great brightness, reasonable factory calibration, and of course the excellent resolution of a 4K panel that's well suited to productivity work as well as gaming. There are no areas to performance that especially stand out, but no deal breaker flaws either, it's just great bang for buck. At $500 and a lot of these mid to upper tier price points, it gets much harder to make a firm recommendation. Around this price, you can get an upgrade pick on either my 1440p 240Hz or 4K 144Hz choices, and in this case, I've gone with a more premium 1440p gaming display, the ASUS ROG Swift XG27 AQMR. It's a 27-inch 1440p 300Hz IPS display that launched at $650 US, but is now available for just $500 flat, a great price for what it offers. Relative to the MSI G274 QPX I recommended at $350, the XG27 AQMR offers both a higher refresh rate and superior response time tuning. This allows it to offer both a single overdrive mode experience and faster transitions at pretty much every refresh rate thanks to variable overdrive. On top of this, it's nicely calibrated at the factory, especially its sRGB mode, while also featuring a good contrast ratio and wide gamut support. A very solid choice for someone looking for something a little better than a budget monitor with these specs. At $600, I would purchase a 32-inch 4K 144Hz gaming monitor like the Gigabyte M32U, although realistically, I think most people would be better off going for something better bang for buck. Still, being one of the more affordable 32-inch 4K gaming monitors, the M32U is a great choice if you want more screen real estate while preserving a high resolution. It's not the best performer, I'd say it's average across the board, but it's quite reasonable for $600 US. At $700, there are similar concerns around value and features as there are at $600. I think most buyers would be better off with a cheaper monitor offering more bang for buck or saving up for a $800 pick. However, if you insist on spending $700, then the LG 32GR93U is a decent buy. It's a stronger performer than the Gigabyte M32U across the board, while keeping its 32-inch 4K 144Hz IPS LCD characteristics. Better response time tuning, better calibration, a few more features, it's a good monitor. For $800 US, we can begin to recommend OLED monitors, and I think at this price point, the choice is a no-brainer. The Alienware AW3423DWF. 
Having now sat at this price point for several months, grabbing a 34-inch 165Hz QD OLED ultrawide for $800 is a great deal. In fact, I rank this monitor very highly out of all the QD OLEDs I've tested, so to have it positioned as one of the cheapest is fantastic news for buyers. Compared to cheaper monitors, you do get several key upgrades related to its OLED panel. Elite response times, deep blacks, per pixel local dimming, and excellent HDR including brightness up to 1000 nits. It's not a great choice for productivity work due to burn-in concerns, but for gamers I think this is a pretty substantial improvement over our $700 pick, even if we are sacrificing resolution, going from 4K class down to 1440p class. At $900 US, I would grab the Samsung Odyssey Neo G7, which is actually a little less than that right now, more like $850 US. This is the high-end option for people that want to primarily game on their monitor, but are concerned about burn-in, want to 4K resolution, or are planning on doing a decent amount of productivity work. The Neo G7 offers a 32-inch 4K 165Hz VA LCD, but pairs this with a 1196 zone local dimming backlight for true HDR capabilities. Being a proper HDR monitor, you can enjoy games with deep blacks, bright highlights, and a great contrast ratio. Samsung's high-end VA technology delivers strong response times for nice fast motion, plus this is a 4K monitor without the concerns around pixel structure, screen coding, or burn-in that we see from OLEDs. It is quite curved, packing a 1000R curvature, but I really like what it brings, especially at a new low price of around $850 US. At $1,000, I would recommend the ASUS ROG Swift PG27 AQDM, the best of the 27-inch 1440p 240Hz W OLED gaming monitors. This is a truly excellent product in a lot of ways, delivering motion clarity that destroys most LCD monitors and gets very close to 360Hz offerings. Even if you weren't that interested in HDR gaming, the PG27 AQDM is a great product for competitive multiplayer gamers due to its speed and high refresh rate, and it gets even better if you play a variety of games that include both multiplayer and single player. That's down to the excellent HDR capabilities of this OLED, deep zero level blacks per pixel local dimming, and good levels of brightness lead to a stunning HDR experience while gaming. There are a few downsides here, such as the weak text clarity and risk of permanent burn-in, so it's not a great display for productivity, but for 1440p gaming, there are few products as good as this one. It's also brighter than its competitors in a lot of HDR scenarios, giving it an edge that's worth paying for in a lot of circumstances. If you have more than $1,000 to spend on a gaming monitor, I would hold tight right now and wait for CES in January of 2024, where we are expected to learn more about 32-inch 4K 240Hz OLED displays. These are set to be highly sought after premium displays and I'm expecting debut prices above $1000. Even if you aren't absolutely set on an OLED or these specifications, it's still worth waiting to see what they bring and see how that affects the rest of the market in terms of pricing. And that does it for our price point monitor recommendations. If you want more detailed information on these monitors, we do have reviews available for most of them on this channel. Just search for the monitor in question and it'll hopefully pop up. Also, if you'd rather know what the best monitors are in a given category rather than what the best monitors are at a given price, we have plenty of other breakdowns on the channel that give more options and more information about various categories. So anyway, that's it for this one. If you do appreciate our independent testing that goes into, well, reviewing all these monitors so that we can make the recommendation videos, then please do consider supporting us via Patreon or Floatplane. Links are in the description below where you'll get access to some cool benefits in the process, like our ICC profiles, we've got our Discord community to chat about monitors and all sorts of good stuff. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.